Hello fellow survivors, builders, and explorers. This is Saifa, and welcome back to Feed the Beast Unhinged. Okay guys, you probably noticed this behind me. Butterflies. I don't know what purpose they serve. I know they're part of forestry. And they were added fairly recently, I think. Um, how you catch them is you just go around with a... Um, uh, with a bee scoop, and you right-click on them, and then they drop as an item. Um, and I don't know, I've just been kind of grabbing some as I see them, and if you actually toss them on the ground, they'll actually kind of kick back to life and fly around and everything. I actually released a couple in my base. Uh, they... I know they didn't escape anywhere, so I don't know if they just despawn, or if uh, they die, I don't know. But there's like a... A butterfly elizer, whatever. It's kind of like a, you know, the tree elizer and the bee elizer. So, there's, I don't know. Maybe they don't really have a purpose yet. But man, I looked all over my base and they're not here. I know they didn't get out. I know they didn't get out. I know I got these pipes disconnected right now. I uh, just not taking up any more power. Uh, got some more oil. And look at that. My fuel is completely filled up. This is the first time since I installed it that my, uh, my refinery hasn't been running. Pretty cool. Where'd my butterflies go? The sheep left me? No, the butterflies left me? Why do my pets keep leaving me? I feel like Elmira. Uh, okay. So, I've been pretty busy, but... Nothing overly constructive, to be honest with you. And I'm going to back up because I got something over there I don't want to spoil it yet. Okay. I've been tree breeding like a madman. Oh, there's a butterfly. Um, oh, look at that right there. I'll show you that in a second. Anyway, I've got uh, I am up to the Imperial and industrial bees, and this is kind of like a little automated system. What I'm basically doing is generating a whole bunch of drones with this. These are all purebred right here. Uh, these guys are also purebred, and then over here I'm trying to get more um, uh, industrial bees, and I got a little bit of a system working out that actually is kind of working for me. I keep trying to get a uh, purebred diligent drones or diligent princesses then I breed them with these purebred unweary drones and that's worked out for me pretty good you know one if you're interested in the bees uh, and you you know if that's like you know one of the big reasons that you want to play a mod pack is for the forestry bees uh, do not play gray uh, the uh, the unhinged there is absolutely no extras in here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the problem is, you see these frames that I've been making? Um, in the extra bees, you get something called a soul frame, which increases the, uh, the chances of you getting a mutation. It's not in here. So it's very slow going. And to be honest with you, the extra bees is really quite nice. I think that... Maybe it wasn't included because it is pretty powerful. Maybe a little overpowered, I don't know. Okay, what is this? Well, this is uh, walnut trees. This is actually three walnut trees that I stacked on top of each other. Ah, and I'll go over a little bit how I got to these, but check that out. Walnuts. And why do you want walnuts? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, the walnut is actually just a means to an end. What you want is the chestnut. And the reason you want them is for seed oil. The uh, amount of oil you get from the wheat seeds and the melon seeds is just horrible. And I think that is a Greg Tech nerf. I'm almost certain of it. So, what I'm going to do is chop all these guys down. But actually, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to stop being stupid about it and, uh, whoops, where am I going? 
and use my chainsaw much quicker. I should make a lap pack or something too. I think the lap packs or the back bat packs. I don't know. Something's in here because uh, the chainsaw's power does not last very long. The other thing that I noticed is that they seem to, the walnuts themselves, seem to be taking a long, long time to mature on the tree. I'm not sure if that's because I just bred a lousy walnut tree, or if it's been, uh, or if Greg Tech has done something to extend it. I'm kind of thinking it's the former. I do have a tree elizer, so I guess I should probably analyze one of these saplings and see what it's like, because I can probably improve on it. And I do actually have a uh, chestnut tree. Um, I just wanted to harvest the, uh, you know, these walnuts. I got the chestnut tree pretty darn rapidly, actually. The chestnut saplings really rapidly. When I played this on my ultimate server, man, it took me days to actually get the uh, the chestnut saplings. Okay. And if we look up, I mean, uh, you can see all these guys, all, all these walnuts that are just sitting here. Delicious, delicious seed oil is what this is. 25 stacks of walnuts. My squeezer is going to be working overtime. Oh, and check out what you can do with the uh, the wax. You can make these little capsules, which replaces the uh, the tin cans. So you can save your tin. Okay. Whoa, boom. Okay, what in the world is all this? Well, um, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> this whole thing here started off as a simple way for me to explain something to anyone that might be new to tree breeding. Uh, and it just kind of evolved into um, uh, just a little showcase that I decided to put together for mm, no major purpose, just to give something comparative and to explain a few things. I'm sure that pretty much anybody that watches this will already understand that, but there might be some new guys out there. So here's what I'm getting at. Uh, the end result of what I was initially trying to get with the tree breeding was this guy right here. The chestnut tree. And you can see I put bees under there. So I got the name of the the name of the tree and then how you get it. So chestnut, you get it from the bees, from tree breeding. As opposed to, let's go over here to this acacia tree that you get through biomes aplenty. Now, what gets confusing is that there is another acacia tree that you actually get through tree breeding as well. It is a different tree with the same name from a different mod. And uh, if you're playing on sort of your own custom mod pack, or if for some reason you've added in extra biomes or biomes XL, extra biomes X, whatever the heck it is, there's going to be an acacia tree in that mod that is separate to both of these. So that's kind of the point I was getting at. Okay, anyway, getting back to what I was saying, to get the chestnut tree, you have to breed the walnut tree with the cherry tree. And to get the cherry tree, you have to breed... Um, Something with something. Not important. Anyway, what gets kind of confusing is you might say, uh, you know, hey, um, why can't I use one of these cherry trees? Because here's a cherry tree. Here's a cherry tree. It will not work because they are not the same tree. So you have to really pay attention to, you know, what mod you're uh, using the trees from. Because to start off your tree breeding, you might be tempted to, uh, you know, grab one of these uh, magic trees and, and try to crossbreed it with uh, one of these fir trees. It's not going to work. The only trees that you can uh, start off your breeding with are the four different vanilla trees. So your jungle trees, your vanilla oak trees, your birch trees, and the spruce. 
The rest of these trees from Biomes of Plenty or any other mod will not work for your tree breeding. Now, it would be really cool if the mod makers kind of got together and added that functionality. Another thing I want to show off here is the rubber trees. This one is added by Industrial Craft, and I believe this tree is added by Mine Factory Reloaded, I think. Um, I actually prefer this one. The advantage to this one is you just make a little tree tap and you right click on these little jobs right here. Um, but actually if you plant these, the saplings, you're guaranteed to get some raw rubber with every log that you cut down and they grow really rapidly so I don't see a need to uh, keep a little tree farm. And I gotta kill this guy. Uh, I have every single Biomes of Plenty tree except for one that I can't actually get to yet. This is a pine tree, and he refuses to grow. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, and this guy isn't really a tree. Um, but he's cool anyway. This is bamboo. They actually drop saplings. You plant them, and when you cut them down, uh, you get a bunch of bamboo pieces that you can actually put together into a plank. Pretty cool. This is an apple tree. And it grows in the uh, the orchard biome. It has absolutely nothing to do with the apple oak tree that you get through breeding. But the really cool thing about this guy is, right click on the leaves. And you get apples. I love this. I may actually start my own orchard with nothing but these because uh, fruit juice is actually pretty useful. What I would like to find out, and I kind of doubt it, I really doubt it, in fact I'm fairly certain it doesn't work, is that the big multi-farm structures, it would be cool if they were compatible with this, because you just get so many apples. Okay, moving on. Uh, this white cherry and pink cherry are the same tree, just with different leaves, and they grow up big like a massive oak tree, so they're very nice have a uh, very very pink wood this guy's pretty interesting this uh ooh, jacaranda when you see them in the wild they're I think they're only like two logs tall in the wild and then the the tree and then the leaves are up here but I planted this guy and he turned out really large for his size now the interesting thing that I noticed about this tree is that if you look at any other tree you see how the log goes all the way up into the leaves on this tree and that tree and every other tree. The weird thing about this guy is the logs stop and then the leaves are like a little cap that sits on top the top log. I mean, nothing special. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, pretty nice wood. If you look at it isolated from everything else, it kind of has a lavender hint to it. Pretty nice. Uh, let's go up here. These are uh, more biomes of plenty. This is the mangrove. You have to plant this guy on sand. And the interesting thing about this one is that the uh, tree actually goes down into the ground a bit when you plant it. It's pretty interesting. Here's the palm tree. I really like the planks on this because it's opposite of the other wood. If you look, the, the grain of the wood... Uh, goes horizontal, but the palm it actually goes vertical. That's pretty neat, and I uh, I like the uh, the bark pattern on that as well. Okay, here we have the dark wood from Biomes of Plenty. Pretty nice tree, nice uh, nice sort of grungy looking planks. I like it. And here we have an interesting little guy, the hell bark. And this is the biggest, uh, I mean, this is what you get, I think. I don't think you can get it any larger than that. This guy actually grows in the nether when you have biomes of plenty installed. And you've seen this guy before, the willow. Very, very good tree um, for sapling, for lumber. They grow big and uh, they grow quickly. Uh, here's the fir tree. Sort of a... A brown with sort of a greenish tint to it. It's a nice, uh, nice wood. And here is the acacia tree that we saw. Pretty standard stuff. Now this guy, the magic tree. I'm not sure if there's a special purpose to it. I don't think there is. But 
definitely cool looking planks. I really like that, and the bark is completely unique. Uh, one thing, the biome that uh, this guy grows in naturally spawns witches. So, uh, yeah, I almost died grabbing this. Moving along, we're starting to get into the trees that you get through breeding. So here's the cherry tree, and uh, <clears throat> this is the big difference here between these trees and the biomes of plenty. I can't right-click to get the, uh, the fruit, but if I punch it, I get it. And the cherries are actually used in the squeezer to get seed oil. You don't actually get fruit juice from them. And then you already saw the uh, walnut tree. Now, here we have something very strange. This is the silver lime tree. However, when you breed a silver lime tree, it usually doesn't have uh, the, the flowers. These are actually apples. This thing produces apples. And that's just a result of crossbreeding. You can make the silver lime produce apples. So that's uh, it's kind of weird. Here we have the lemon tree, just a tiny little guy. I'm sure through selective breeding you can make it bigger. And yes, it actually does drop lemons that you can squeeze into fruit juice like the, uh, like the apple. And then here we have the chestnut tree. Very cool. And as far as I know, I guess we can check, the chestnuts are the best way to get seed oil. These uh, trees up here in the front row are just um, sort of different colored leaf versions of vanilla trees. So the maple, the dying tree, lovely, and the autumn orange all have oak wood. And the yellow autumn is just a birch tree with yellow leaves, essentially. This tree here is really cool. And I am going to show you more about it later, but it's called the Origin Tree it Drops Oak Wood. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. It's, it's from a special biome that I'm sure you probably already know about, but it was new to me, so I'm going to show it off to you in a little bit. And we have this massive guy, a redwood from Biomes of Plenty. And let me tell you, it was interesting trying to figure out how to plant this thing. I ended up making a... Um, <sighs> Yeah, like a 5x5 five five row of redwood saplings, and then just bone mealing them until something would happen, and it did. It shot up, but it didn't actually use all the saplings. I had some saplings over here, some saplings over here that were, that were still left. So, some kind of pattern you have to plant to get it to grow... One of the problems that I notice, it's not a problem per se, it's an annoyance, is that Biomes of Plenty is very, very popular, but the actual information to help you on it is just absolutely non-existent. There is a, uh, a wiki for Biomes of Plenty, but it is just woefully and embarrassingly under, under, uh, underwritten. So, no one's really gotten in to explain things. So, there's a lot of stuff about the mod. It's, it's a massive mod. It's cool. But, it's just hard to find any information on it at all. Okay, now that is pretty much all the Biomes of Plenty trees and a good bit of the Forestry trees. Um, I am still doing my whole uh, crossbreeding thing. I got these guys up here. This is a, a, a red... Um, a red, oh geez, a red spruce and a mundane tree, and I can get a bull pine with them. Everything from this point on is uh, just because I, you know, I want to complete the uh, the set kind of. Um, I got what I wanted to out of the tree breeding, which was the chestnut tree. So from this point on, it's just because uh, I want to do it, and I might as well since I'm still doing the uh, the, the bees. Might as well put them to work. The other thing I wanted to show you was I actually made some more jetpacks. The advanced jetpack is not in this mod, and jetpacks are very cheap. And I knew in search of those saplings that I was going to be making quite the journey. So I just made some extra jetpacks. And look at that. Now, there's another interesting thing I've noticed. And I don't quite understand what I'm doing. That is a mutation. 
And I know that my bees don't reach over this far, but even if they did, when I was out exploring, I have noticed other mutations elsewhere. And I think that it's the butterflies that are doing it. Now, I don't know what initially made the butterflies spawn in, if it was my tree breeding or what. But there's another one, but I never saw them until I started doing them. But I'm not just seeing them over by my base. I'm seeing them everywhere I go. So, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I was, maybe they were there before and I just didn't notice them. Hello, chunk error. One other thing that I, uh, I had a bit of a problem. The quarry was bugging out on me, like big time, and it happened three different times. Over there in that water area, you can still see the framework in the distance. I was making a larger quarry, and it would go down, uh, you know, 15 plus levels, and then it would just start bugging out completely. It was still running, but the drill wasn't actually doing anything. It was just kind of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The, the hunch that I have <clears throat> is that maybe it was hitting some kind of a block with the underground biomes that was making it bug out. I don't know. But it happened twice, and it hasn't happened since I went back and started just using the quarry in its smallest configuration. So that kind of stinks because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I have to run out and constantly set it back up when it's done because it doesn't really take it all that long to uh, completely drill down to its bottom most, or you know, to the bottom uh, or to bedrock in its smallest configuration. And I, you know, I did some uh, searching for it and can't find any information about the problem. And I, oh, quicksand! Ah, save me, jetpack! Woo! So anyway, um, I'm just gonna keep using the quarry in the small configuration for now. If anyone else has had that problem where the quarry just bugs out and stops digging down, um, let me know if there's any kind of a fix for it, because it's really annoying. Look at this guy right here! Oh, poor well zombie, he's stuck in the quicksand. <laughs> I love it! Okay guys, this is the biome that I wanted to show you. It is called Origin Valley. And it is so cool, I love it. If you don't know what you're looking at, this is what Minecraft looked like in its initial alpha stages extremely green grass uh, you know crazy neon green uh, trees <laughs> so I uh, you know hats off to the uh, the biomes of plenty guys because this was really a, a neat addition I love it okay you know I was about to start on a fairly large project um, to, uh, make one of the big forestry multi-block farms to harvest the chestnuts. But, you know, I'm really thinking that this mine factory farm should actually do the job, but just at a semi-manual rate. I mean, the forestry one would be completely automated. This one right here, what we would have to do is wait for the walnuts to mature and then give power to the harvester. I really think that that would work and I'd like to try it. The only problem I I can think of is I don't know if the chestnuts will... chestnut trees will grow properly because you have to have you know, a two by two, but I'm not sure if you have like, you know, a two by two and then a two by two and then a two by two, if they'll sprout up or not. Okay, I, I hopped over to a uh, test world, and yeah, that's that's kind of what I worried about. It's not going to work, so we are not going to be able to use this guy for chestnut farming. That disappoints me. 
Okay, guys, uh, the chestnuts, I think, are going to wait for the next episode until I figure out what I want to do exactly. Uh, I wanted to do something else in the meantime. There's something that I think I forgot to show you guys. You see this uh, gold pipe right here? Ah, hello. I don't think I showed this to you. That actually comes over here. And I have an engine just for my storage thing. What was going on is that when I was powering a lot of these things, this would go offline a lot of times and I wouldn't be able to access my stuff. Now, the problem is these forestry machines are just an, a power sink. Even if they're not doing anything, they're using a power. That's why I have these tubes here that I can connect and disconnect. But that's annoying, and I think it's time that I did something about it. I think that I am going to create a separate space for the power sinks that I have and run them separately from my other machines because like I have these disconnected right now and I'd really rather not have them disconnected but I needed the power so let's work on that okay I have a nice big area cleared out over here now I think that the regular old uh, you know or processing machinery that I have over there plus uh, this refinery should get along just fine with these two steam engines so I'm going to have two steam engines for my job over this way or heck maybe three I mean I should have plenty of steam so let's go industrial Let's see what all I need to make. Okay, so the steel gears are what I need. Oh, I think I had the, uh, the wrong type of steel. I don't have any steel ingots. No. What? I made them all into... Oh, for crying out loud. Hmm. But, since I have this, can't I use it to make... How do I do that? Okay, so refined... Oh, refined iron, really? Eh, why not? Let's give it a shot. That's something that I haven't done. Hello? What? Okay, I gotta make some coal dust. Okay, let's give it a shot. I think it was two coal dust. Yeah, two coal dust per refined iron. And it's a little slow, but it's a lot faster than using the blast furnace. The regular blast furnace, I mean. Even though this technically uh, is a very, very power-hungry piece of equipment. And that actually gives us this other steel ingot. And it's kind of weird. I'm surprised Greg Tech does that. I'm surprised it doesn't just give you the regular steel ingot. Just for the sake of uh, inventory, you know what I mean? Okay, got that. And it also gave us these dark ashes, which really don't have much of a use. Uh, apparently, you can turn them into slag. Or, wait, no, that needs to be an elect regular electrolyzer. Do I even have one? I don't think I do. Yeah, oh well. And then you can turn it into rock wool, which is a decorative block. Essentially a building material. Okay... Industrial steam engine, steel gear. Okay. And this should give us eight. Four. 
Four is what I needed. Derp. <laughs> okay, now we should be able to make two of these. Cool. And I'm going to need two more levers, I think. But apparently I can't spell lever. Okay, let's throw some stuff away that we're not going to need. Probably not going to need the dolomite. Alright, let's get these guys set up. I know I'm throwing quite a bit at this uh, boiler, but, you know, I'm using the high-pressure uh, tank, so I might as well take advantage of it. So now, we have to figure out what type of piping do we use to run it over there. The stone conductive piping is great and all, but there was quite a few times where the little beam of energy was actually turning red. And I, as far as I know, that means that there's uh, more MJs going through the line than the line is capable of handling, so you got a bit of a bottleneck there. So what to do? Well, I got golden transport pipes out the wazoo because I made too many of them. So I'm going to make them. I don't care. I know it's a waste, and I know that they handle like 200-some MJ. I'll never produce that much. But it's okay because I have gold in excess, so I'm going to use them. Okay, so I am going to make half a stack of gold. Yeah, 256 megajoules a tick. Oh boy, you ready for this? Uh, some of you probably just cringed when I did that, right? That's okay. Gold is not a rare commodity for me on this game. So let's run it across. And I'm going to put my uh, regular machines here. Okay, the rolling machine... We'll stick you here. Okay, the centrifuge can go there. Definitely want the carpenter here. There it is. Okay, now... Not worried about that. Uh, the squeezer and the fermenter I'm... Eh, I think I'm actually going to stick these down here. And I'll explain that... in just a little bit. But I'm eventually going to, uh... have the squeezer for my seed oil completely... automated anyway. Hmm. Is it just my imagination, or is the energy line actually thicker? I think it is. That's kind of cool. Now, as a test, what happens if I do this? Maybe it's not thicker. Okay. It was just my imagination. Yeah, see there? It went red. So, I was producing more MJs that could get through the pipe. And that's a shame, because that is a waste. Now, the next thing... I want to... Now, there's... A, there's other things that I need to feed, but I'm not sure... how... you know, this splits. For example... If I do this, do I have an equal amount of MJ going this way? and an equal amount of MJ going this way at the split, or do all of the machines sort of equally draw in the uh, MJs available? I mean, do they do they share them fairly, I guess, is what I'm asking. All right, now... Eh, I'm not too worried about uh, replacing this with the gold. That would be kind of wasteful, and I, I don't... I'm not too concerned about... Uh, 
that having a crazy amount of speed or anything. Now that thing's been off, uh, been off for a long time, so our uh, our harvester is probably going crazy right now. Or maybe it's just barely putting along. Yikes! Ah, it doesn't. Something's wrong here. Okay, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna bypass those machines up there. And run power straight out to that guy. And these guys should pretty much... Yeah, 8 megajoules, 8 megajoules, 8 megajoules. Okay. Now let's see how our harvester is doing. Not great. And just all of a sudden, it took off like a rocket. Holy cow! Oh, and I don't have anything down there to catch those saplings. <laughs> I need to grab a chest temporarily. Okay, that'll work for now. Okay... I think I got it figured out. Oh, that was my squeezer, wasn't it? Put the fermenter there. Ooh, I'm gonna need to light this area up. I do not want any creepers spawning down here, let me tell ya. And I'll put my hopper back there. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Do I even need to connect a pipe to it? Because they'll all just kind of fall right down in the hopper, won't they? Oh, even the chest fell in the hopper. Whoa, why aren't you, uh... Why are you trying to feed into that cobblestone? Okay, just in case. We'll connect that there. And then we need to stick our mulch back in there. And for power, let's go ahead and just do this. Okay, and we'll run our squeezer right there. Man, those, uh... Pipes go quicker than you think, don't they? Okay, we can fill that back up with uh, the walnuts. And we need to get this guy filling back into here. And my drill's dead. Okay, now let's break that block and then grab this valve. Now I know it looks empty, but as soon as I uh, fix the tank it will technically fill back up. So if I place that there and I take my valve and put it there... Um, oh, that's right, it was already empty anyway because I've been uh, filling up this tank. Okay, now I need to make some room down here. Let's see here, how can I do this? Because I'm going to need this, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need my wooden waterproof pipe. So if I put that there, I put the redstone engine there, ah, okay, this will work. Put that there. Oh, you know what I'm forgetting? I am forgetting water. This actually is a golden opportunity to do something a little different. But let's go ahead and finish connecting this. And I think I'll leave that block open, that way I can check the, uh, the amount that I have here. What are you doing there? As long as you despawn, that's fine. You know, we have a squeezer sitting right next to this guy. We could power this thing with fruit juice. 
Why don't we go ahead and do that? That might be kind of cool. Okay. Put down our redstone torch. A redstone engine. Yeah, it's kind of what I figured was going to happen. Hmm. I thought you could turn the... Well, for crying out loud. Okay, let's do this. Let's get our wooden waterproof pipe. Okay, that does work that way. And then put our engine... No! Damn it! You go there. Okay. I will make you do what I want. Ooh, that sounded kind of creepy, didn't it? Whoa. I don't really enjoy having machines like this so close to each other, because you get weird problems like that. And hopefully these pipes and engines don't somehow switch orientation on me. I know that sounds uh, silly, but I've had that happen before in... A one in a uh, I don't remember what it was some mod with buildcraft it wasn't ultimate but I had it hooked to um, oh it, it was new world mod pack I had um, these wooden pipes hooked up to big Zycraft tanks and every time I would log in the pipes orientation would have switched so maybe that was just a bug with Zycraft okay now I uh, need apples, which, uh, believe it or not, I have an abundance of because of that thing. Look at that. 1,200 apples. <laughs> and we actually should be able to automate this pretty well. Okay. So if we stick... Oh, boy, I can grab multiple. That's right. The squeezer has uh, room for multiple stacks. And it's still giving me mulch as a byproduct, which is good. It'd be nice to automatically get that in there, but man, space is getting kind of cramped as it is. I don't think this is necessarily going to be faster than using water, but theoretically it should be more efficient than using water. We should be able to automate the apples actually going in there and to do that I'm gonna need oh I don't have any more diamond pipes oh that's right I turned them all into apiarist pipes that's okay that's not really that big of a deal I got my quarry running I'll be getting diamonds left and right I hope okay now what I've done in the past is just have my apples go into this barrel. But we don't need that anymore. I needed an iron pipe. And I'll show you why... here. So I want to replace this pipe with an iron pipe. And I need to switch... There we go. So that solid is the output. Okay, that'll work. So the, uh, the saplings come down here, some of them will go this way, some of them will go that way. The apples come out the yellow one, and then go over to the basement, where they will be split off here. Whoops. Okay, there we go. And then we just change the blue to apples. Okay. Ooh, my jetpack's empty. I can't freaking believe I'm doing this. Okay. That was rather expensive, but it definitely helped. This thing is actually running at a uh, pretty reasonable rate now. 
But yeah, it's uh, producing app, uh, producing juice pretty darn quick. Okay, guys, I know that I was all over the place this episode, but we yeah we got a lot done. This uh, needed to be done, and it's working a lot better. I know that some people are gonna cringe about all the gold I use to do this, but with the quarry running. It's not that big of a deal. I don't need the gold for a whole lot, and it just keeps piling up and piling up and piling up. Plus, I'm, uh, you know, you get a little bit of bonus gold because of the, um, you know, the pulverizer. So, I'm not worried about it. But we, uh, we got the uh, new purpose for the squeezer, but I'm gonna have to get a second squeezer down here for seed oil, and it'd be nice to stick that seed oil in a tank which I have room for right here. But you guys have seen all that before, so I think I'll do that off camera. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I'll see you next time.